Hi everyone and welcome to this lesson of how to draw a bleeding heart. Um, now with your downloadable step-by-step um, -step guide you will have um, the pencils to go with your picture and I just wanted to show you something. I just use these little like I actually found him in Kmart he's so cute um, and I just put all the pencils that I need in here. Now you'll see that all the numbers on the actual page are um, numbers relating to the Prismacolor codes and not everyone has Prismacolor which is fine um, but you can just use the numbers like if you do have Prismacolor you just get the numbers that you have that are close enough um, to to what you need um, because their range is like they have like a billion pencils um, and if you're using a different range of pencils just try and colour match as close as you can to the colour guide that you've got. I like to prepare by just putting everything in a little pencil tin, like a pencil jar like this, just so um, I know what I've got and I'm ready to go without having to worry about, um, you know, finding things. So that's a really good um, first step. I also highly recommend to use a pencil that has like a detailed rubber, so either one on the end like this, or um, if you have like a pencil eraser, that also works as well. Um, just because we do a lot of like basic shapes and then we cut into those shapes. So then we need to erase the lines that we have. So um, without further ado, let's get started. The bleeding heart actually looks like one of the very complicated um, flowers, but it's actually very easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with doing points like this. And basically what we're doing is determining where the start of the line is and where the end of the line is for the different sections of our picture. So now all we need to do is basically just roughly join up those lines like this um, and follow that that basic step-by-step -step guide. So the, base, the first steps um, is we're doing the stem in which the little bleeding heart flowers come off. So we're going to start off with a wide base here and then go into a point. And we're going to do that for two stems like this. The second stem comes off the first stem that we have created. Like that. Now we can erase those little points that we've made if they're in the way. It's very important to keep cleaning up your picture as you go along. Um, so you, you do not get confused throughout the drawing process, like so. Okay, so the next step is to draw our love hearts. Now, I like to just do a rough guideline like so, like this, of where each heart will go. And then I like to draw the hearts. Now, these are no normal hearts. They are quite wide in the center there at the top. And we want to keep in mind that they're all sort of going on an angle like this. And the reason is, is because these hearts are hanging off the, the stems. Um, so they are going to be hanging off in that direction. Now, we can see in the guide picture that we have here that some bleeding heart flowers are in front of other bleeding hearts. Now I highly suggest that you cut, draw through that picture like that and then erase the lines that do not make sense. Um, that way you know that the lines that you're creating um, are essentially flowing in the right direction. So next, as we get to the smaller ones, we're going to be a little bit more irregular with our love hearts, like so. Um, and by irregular, I mean we're having a straight line and then a curve. Remember, we're not drawing our standard love heart, we're drawing flowers. So um, they are going to be slightly different to, to a standard sort of love heart if you're drawing a love heart as a... Um, as a picture on a standalone. Next we draw a stem coming down from that base and we draw the next love heart which is slightly smaller because not all of the flowers are the same. Now we draw the stems coming out from the base closer to the main stem and we draw one heart in front of the other. And 
and this one comes just slightly behind like that so I am actually tracing over that base shape now remember at all times to keep sharpening your pencil to have a sharp point so that your lines intersect nice and cleanly okay so next we're going to add on the little tails of the love hearts which are just like that I like to keep a very loose hand and um, make sure that those shapes have a nice free form with some little curves and wriggles on them. Um, don't be too concerned if that your um, love hearts start to overlap. That's quite okay. Next, I'm going to start curving this around until that reaches its final point where the two lines come clean together. And what we are going to do is do a C shape here at the end, go in as if we were drawing a circle and then come out like so. The next shape we're going to do is a C shape like this. And we're going to come out and draw several lines like this. And then we're going to marry them up like so. Then we will draw another one just here. And this one will look just like this. Now it's starting to look messy. So I will erase the lines that now no longer matter because I've drawn on top of those base shapes. Remember to draw light until you get it right. Okay, so next we will carry down to the next layer and we will curve this end down till it comes into one singular point. Erase the lines that are no longer needed. And this will be the base shape, which is a upside down triangle. Then we'll draw another stem coming out here. And again, we'll do that long jelly bean style. Now I will continue to draw the little extensions on these love heart flowers. If at any point in this tutorial I'm going too fast, please feel free to pause and draw to catch up and then resume the filming. Okay, so next we are going to add in the stems here and they are having a slight curve. Okay. like so. As we get to the top of the stem here, we start to go a little bit straight and then we start the curve in the other direction for those stems. I'm just going to erase these undercurrent lines from the original stem just so we have a nice clean picture. Now next we are going to Draw little, sort of like little curved ticks. So I start on the page and I flick off like that. So they're fading as they go down. And you can see that that is starting to make them look slightly 3D and it will be a nice little guide for our drawing later on. Okay, so let's get started with our colouring in. Now, the way that the step-by-step -step tutorials are shown is to show you um, what the darkest colour is first, and then we work to the light. With the Prisma colours, we can actually blend in that fashion. Um, but if you're working with other colour pencils that are hardcore pencils, then you will want to start light and work your way dark. Um, the soft core in the Prismacolor allows for us to be able to blend in an opposite direction. But for today, we will be doing light to dark. So we are starting off with um, our lightest purple colour. Um, today I'm using the 934 Lavender. I'm starting off with a nice sharp point. And I'm going to flick from the center down 
like so. And I'm flicking, if I'm on the left side, I'm flicking out and around that way. If I'm on the right side, I'm flicking out and around that way. And the center straight down. I'm going to do this for all of them. And again, we're doing the flick. So we're starting heavy on the page and finishing light. As if you were marking someone's essay and you were giving them a tick. Like so. I like to extend that tick down around the outside edges of the love heart. And it gradually gets shorter the closer we get to the center. Now, with Prismacolor, you can layer these quite heavily, um, so I'm not too concerned about having little bits and pieces of, of graphite underneath. If you are using a hard lead pencil or a different brand, I suggest cleaning up that flower as much as possible so you have a nice, clean finish. If you are drawing this flower for the first time um, I suggest that you do a rough copy first and then transfer your rough copy onto a master page. Now with these longer ones here we're doing a diagonal down like this so we're starting heavy here and finishing light there. This one with the triangle down the bottom we start light here right and we go down in a crisscross fashion like that. So let's continue with these ones up here. Like so. Okay. Next, we're going to add in the next level of um, the pinks and reds so we have the magenta 930 my colors aren't exactly matching up with the number on the page tonight um because i wanted to show you how you can still use variations of um the colors if you don't have the right color so i'm starting at the base of the love heart and i'm flicking up and you'll see that this will gradually start to blend in with that mauve or lavender that's at the top. Sorry, used the wrong, said the wrong word. Flick, 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 flick. Like so. It's important that you do these in the opposite directions so the lavender hard to soft and magenta hard to soft because that will allow for a smoother transition of colors from light to dark Okay, Okay. so next I'm going to go back over with my lavender and do one more layer. And this time I'm going to be slightly heavier with the pencil, really working in those two colours. Next, I'm going to grab the third level of shade. 
which this one is the um, dark purple 939 that I'm using tonight. So next I'm going to do very small flicks. I don't want to override the magenta layer that I've done. And then I'm going to use this to go over those initial flicks I did like so. Now, when I'm doing my flicks at the top of the flower, I'm being quite deliberate with the direction that they are going. Because I want them to look like they are um, little indents in the flower. This back one that's sitting behind the other two flowers is going to be considerably darker than the front ones because it is sitting behind the other flowers. Okay, next I'm going to go back to the magenta and I'm going to sharpen the lead before I start. Now I'm going to flick up in that magenta very lightly because I want to blend the dark purple in with the magenta to enrich in the tone. I also want to cement in some more of that magenta in the middle of the flower and I want a gentle blend up to the lavender tones. Okay, once again, I'm going to go back in with that lavender and I'm just going to go and fill in any gaps that I can see, making sure to work around those indents that I made with the dark purple at the top of the love heart. When I feel like I have fully saturated the love hearts in the three tones, I then finish off with the dark purple. The reason I finish off with the dark purple is because I want to make sure that I've got some nice deep tones in there that have not been reduced with any layers of other lighter colours that I have been shading over the top. This will help create a sense of depth in the love heart.
Okay, so, oh, missed one. Finally, I will grab my light grey. And I will just add in some little highlight areas. Making sure that I'm colouring in the direction that I have been previously doing with. I'm only using a medium pressure with this. And this helps just create some highlights on it. So the flowers have a little bit more shape to them. Now, if you're using a hard lead pencil like a Faber-Castell or a Derwin, I would suggest grabbing a um, oil pastel pencil of white or grey to, to do this. You might not get the same effect with um, a hard lead pencil. Okie dokie. So next we are going to do the bottoms of the um, little flowers here. And what we're going to do is start them off with the grey tone, which is the 1060, um, it is a cool grey. And I'm doing one side here and then a small side there. Um, now, we don't have to have these all exactly the same on each flower. In fact, to have a more realistic sort of picture, we want to sort of be a bit ad hoc with our highlights and low lights like so next we are going to grab our lavender and go in between those greys and i'm using a medium pressure and i'm just coloring in those areas as long as i have a nice even application of color i'm not too concerned about the direction of it, especially also because this is a base cover or an undertone for what will be placed on top. And as I go along, I just check my work for any gaps as well. Next, I'm going to grab the magenta and I'm just going to color over those lavender areas. I am not too fast if I don't necessarily cover all the lavender because it makes for a nice um, sort of multi-level sh like shading with a nice lots of different tones going on there. Okay, finally I'll go in with my dark purple. I'll just sharpen that pencil because I'd like a nice um sharp point and i'm just going in and creating some shadows in those crevices and i'm also just outlining these flowers just slightly Again, I'm not being too precise because I really want all the layers to sort of show through with this. Um, so I'm aiming to, you know, have all three tones of colour sort of there. And I find the less I think about it and the more I just sort of go for gold, the more... Um, free-flowing and realistic the picture is.
Okay, so next I am going to work on the stem of the flower. So we want to work in three shades of brown. And you can see I've been um, using quite a lot of brown in my commissions lately, so I don't have a massive <coughs> range of browns to use at the moment. Okay, I'm going to start with a Rogue Tuscan for the top part, which is here. And I'm just going to colour in that stem like so. And then I'm going to grab the sepia 948. And again, I'm not using the exact precise numbers that I've used in the um, demonstrations because I just want you to see that you can use um, different slightly different shades if you don't have all the tools okay and then i'll color in this part here and then the rest of it, I will do the Rogue Tuscan. Then I will go back to my sepia. And, oh, I didn't use it. I grabbed up the wrong one. Picked up 1095 by accident. That's okay. And we will just get in those stems like so. Okay. So next at the base of this stem, it will be brown. We will be slightly brown down here at the base of this one. And then here we will have a slight bit of brown there. We will jump in with a 1069, which is a French grey. And we will add in a little flower bud like this. And we might add in another one there on that side. And the other half of this side like so. I might also reinforce some of the other previous areas that I've done in that grey. Grab my grey pencil. And I'm using quite a lot of pressure now. Okie dokie. Okay, I'm going to grab that French grey again and just make some flicking um, lines like this in the direction of the stem. Then I will jump on in with the Rogue Tuscan, add in some more lines. Now I will blend it all out back in with the actual sepia. I'll also sharpen that pencil to a point. Making sure to not only blend these colours, but to ensure that there are highlights and lowlights. So allowing some of those base colours that we put in the stem to really shine through.
back in with that French grey just to get some highlights happening. Like so. I'll jump in with that Tuscan red just with some random bits there. And then I might grab that accidental brown that I had and just blend out. It's just got that little bit more warmth than the sepia, which will have a nice blending effect. I'll also use that warmed brown through there where I've used that Tuscan red. Now I'll go back in with my sepia and continue to blend those browns until I'm happy with the, the overall effect. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of magenta into the area where I had the Tuscan red. Just a little bit, just to mix it up a bit and highlight it a bit more. And then I'm going to use that Tuscan red to cement in those colours and blend them all together. I'll add a little bit of highlighting with the French grey over the top of that Tuscan red on the base side, like so. I'll do the same down here. Now this is something that you can do with Prismacolors um, because of the nature.